Welcome to What's Up in Jeju, where I visit places around the island and talk about what's happening with Hashtag Daily K's host, Peter Bint. So actually, we won't be covering anything in Jeju today, so I'll, I'll see you later, Peter. I'm just kidding. Uh, oh, that's great. <laughs> that's because uh, we are going to one of these smaller islets because surrounding the island are even smaller islands. Now, Angel, our former reporter from What's Up in Jeju, she did a feature on Marado, mm. the southernmost islet and the southernmost point in the country. And if you remember, I covered Gapado, Marado's larger neighbor, just a little bit above Marado. Well, today we yeah. are headed east to Udo. Are you familiar with this islet, Peter? I, for some reason, have peanuts come to mind. Is that not the place famous for the monkey nuts? Well done. Absolutely. Yes, exactly. It is known for their, yes. their small and delicious peanuts. And, you know, with the peanuts comes all the different snacks and foods that come with it. There's like different kinds of Udo peanut cream bread, Udo peanut ice cream, even Udo peanut makali. But uh, yes, peanuts. Ooh. Well done. Well done. Um, it's at 6.18 okay. square kilometers and a population of around 1,700 people. It's got its own unique charm and fun stuff going on. Plus, it's super close to Sung Sun Sunrise Peak, and I covered Sung Sun Lee for our very first village ventures. So it's uh, super yes. easy to get to. It doesn't take long then by boat from that side of the island. No, no, no. Maybe 10, 15 minute ferry ride. So very close to Sung Sun. Ooh, yeah. nice. Uh, the name itself, Udo, I don't think that means peanut, right? What does that stand for? That is a very good question. So, U is actually the Chinese character for cow. And actually, Udo in Jeju has been referred to as Sosam, or Cow Island, since the ancient times. Because, it. well, why don't we take a look at the first image that I brought today? It is a okay. satellite image of All the right. island. That is a cow. Okay. Wow. There you go. Boom, right there. I don't even have to say anything. I uh, th I didn't know that was an island. I thought it was just a picture of a cow. <laughs> yes. Uh, so as, if you uh, use your imagination, you can kind of see the, just the, the cow. The cow head is up on the top and it, the belly's coming around the side. How on earth, Mark, does that look like a cow? Really? Really, Peter? It, it, come on. Like, it's got the head and the belly. Now, the funny thing is, is this is the, the satellite image but you'll later in our episode, I take a boat ride, uh -huh. and actually, it was from that boat that the curvature of the island really looks like a cow belly and the neck and kind of the leg coming okay. down. It's it's kind of hard to explain, but uh, I guess you just have to go visit and, and do it for yourself. I'm guessing, yeah, in ancient times when it was known as Hosom, they wouldn't have had these aerial photos. So it must be more the resemblance from like sea level. I'm looking forward to checking that out. It gets a lot of visitors despite its small size, right? I'm guessing it has something to do with the vicinity to Jeju, but are there any other attractive points? That's a really good point, Peter. So 2 million visitors each year, and as we said, it's just a 10 to 15 minute ferry ride from Sungsan, and the ferries depart from Sungsan Port every 30 minutes. 200 to 400 passengers typically running from 8 a.m. to 6.30, so they are pumping people. They're moving people back and wow. forth. Yeah. And it features gentle slopes on the island, but much of the island's uh, edges are cliffs, jagged, steep cliffs that are just, <gasps> you will see later. These these cliffs, it, it's almost like, I don't know, CG, you know, like they're just so sharp wow. and jagged and straight, uh, almost like, you know, 90 degrees. It, it does have its own beaches and a lot of uh, very popular spot for fishermen. And as you said, the peanut thing as well. So, yeah, a lot of cool stuff going on with the island. Um, Ray saying, do you need a driver's license? I wonder. That's a good question. Um, I, I Now i got to think. Oh. That That is a good question. I'll have to uh, uh, check with JY with that one if we were required yeah. or not. It's an operating vehicle, so, you know, it's probably good to have it one least licensed driver with you there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That might be a good idea. Maybe you should take it upon yourself to not drive it if you don't have a license. So people who are going down to Jeju Do Island, I've been multiple times, but I never thought, oh, let's go to another island off of this island. So what is drawing those two million people over there? What are they trying to find and explore on Udo? Yeah, that's a that's a pretty good question. And I, this is just me kind of theorizing things. But uh 
You know, I, I would consider Udo almost like kind of like a second or third trip to Jeju kind of thing. Um, because of yours truly, you've got plenty to do on the main island, right? So, uh, you know, go ahead and do that stuff. But once you've kind of seen a lot of the big things or, or uh, places you wanted to see, to meet and experience on the main island, then Udo is just another addition or a hop skip away uh, that you can check out as well. So if you're if you're going mm. to Jeju for the first time and if it's a limited time, you know maybe save Udo for your second or third trip down to Jeju. Mm-hmm. Mm, that's a good idea. I have missed that. I think I'm on my maybe tenth or eleventh trip now. I will have to check it out next time. So what are we going to check out next? Right. So uh, why don't we take a look at this next photo? Because uh, you'll be either tra- walking on the island or driving through and you'll see this. And you might even think like, my goodness, what in the world is this? Check out this next photo. Yeah, those like domes look a little bit like the Kremlin or something like that. It doesn't look like Korean stuff at all. Right. So this is just not a gimmick or just to make make it look cool or fancy or colorful. Have you ever heard of the Austrian visual artist and architect Friedenreich Underwasser? Have you ever heard of him? Underwasser is my bro. Of course, I have never heard of that <laughs> artist. Sorry, I'll have to be honest with you, Mark. Is he famous? Well, actually, it's the first time that I've heard of him as well. And uh, just going in, we contacted the manager of this resort, this park that we're going to talk about next. And it's really really interesting to learn about you may be just curious like all right so what does udo have anything to do with this austrian born artist well underwaster born 1928 Mm. is he's known for blending architecture with a heavy appreciation of nature with uh vivid colors and uh yeah i think we should just dive into our next video because we actually meet uh an artist dosant sally and she walks us through the entire park and it's it's really something it's it's different I had no idea this existed on Udo Island. Let's check it out. All right, we are here at the Underwasser Park, and uh, we're here at Udo Museum with Sally. Sally, nice to meet you. Thanks for hello. Thanks for, hi. hi. Nice to meet you. So, what's happening right now uh, at Udo Museum? Udo Museum. Mm. Uh, here is the we introduced the Jung Eun-hye artist. 저기는 그 정은혜 작가라고 해서 우리들의 블루스라는 드라마에 나왔던 정은혜 right. 배우라고 계세요. 그 배우님은 다운 증후군을 가지고 계신 배우이신데 배우이자 작가로 활동을 하고 계시고 그럼에도 불구하고 그 다운 다운 증후군이 있음에도 불구하고 그런 부분을 이제 본인이 이겨내서 작품으로 사람들에게 좋은 영향을 주고 그리고 그런 부분들로 인해서 많은 분들이 oh, wow. 위로를 There's 받았으면 해서 그런 부분들을 페인팅으로 해서 자기 전시를 하고 있고요. Blues. 많은 yes. 분들이 wow. 이제 얼굴을 그리는 작품들이나 아니면 본인이 영감을 받았던 사람들의 얼굴들 이렇게 그린 작품들이라서 얼굴들이라고 해서 작품 전시를 하고 있고요. 저기는 훈데르트 봐서 전시관이고요. 우리 여기가 훈데르트 봐서 파크예요. 그래서 훈데르트 봐서는 오스트리아 3대 so 화가이고 에곤 슐레랑 클린트와 함께 right. 이름을 나란히 this, 하시는 this분이신데 uh, 사실 에곤 슐레나 클린트에 uh, 비해서는 he's, 많이 알려지지 you know, 않은 분이지만 그럼에도 불구하고 Austria. 환경 Painters. 운동가 그리고 건축가 그리고 화가로서 uh, 되게 많은 이름을 알리신 분이 유럽 쪽에서는 right. 그리고 oh. 그분이 가지고 있는 가치관이나 자연을 사랑하는 마음이 너무 아름다워서 저희 우도 Those columns were actually flown in. They, they weren't built there, so that was pretty amazing too. 파마, 그리고 그분의 wow. 생애 영상도 있고요. 그리고 그분이 직접 지었던 건축들을 모형으로도 저희가 소개하고 있습니다. But I mean, he so when it came like to the design of this park uh, in Udo, right? So who was, I guess, I mean, of course he was referenced, but. Because oh. he, he died in 2000, so... Okay, yeah. so they, they directly mm. worked with mm. you. So they, they, okay, cool, mm-hmm. cool, cool, cool. So it's all legit, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm. Thank you, you so much for answering your question. It's been a real pleasure. Uh, we, we didn't ask for this, but you were just so kind. Uh, the people here at the Hunervasser Park and Hills. And I would just say that, it, you know, I, I, I studied art and I feel like art students, if they wanted if they were ceramics or pottery, like they should come here. Like Thank this is a you. proper like, Thank this you. is not just like, uh, like gimmick 
or a cliche kind of thing like anything from the architecture to yeah. the fa fantastic staff yeah. here. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, this is the, the real deal. This is a proper place. Yeah. Thank you so much, Sally. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, so he was involved in like the design of it. So uh, he passed away in 2000. So they actually met ah. up an advisor who was very, very close, who's worked with him before. And so they kind of got his uh, approval and, and his knowledge and uh, advice to go ahead and construct oh. this. Because it's not just like making a building to kind of look like his stuff. Like Undervasser, he did architecture. He's done architecture all over the world. Um, so this uh -huh. is in the spirit of that, making sure that it you know crosses all the T's and dots all the I's of making sure it's proper, like Undervasser style. Mm -hmm. Wow, that, and just randomly, like he doesn't have a connection like personally with Udo Island. It's just they wanted something based on his art. Yeah, you know, uh, that uh, it seems like the kind of the Ugo, Udo local government, they were looking for an artist to really feature that also embraces nature and and just also, you know, an attraction as well to, to bring more folks because uh, associated with this park, there is also a essentially a resort as well. And so they have all these uh, pensions lined up where you can go ahead and reserve and spend the nights at Udo too. Oh, wow. And you've sent us some really cool postcards, Mark, that I assume are Huntavasa pieces of, of art? Yeah, so uh, they, they were kind enough to give us uh, two cards, and we we're like, oh, you know what, we should go ahead and send. But we were really worried that the cards were going to get to you in time. And, uh, you know, JY this morning, she's like, oh, looks like they didn't get their cards. And then just as I sat down in this chair, JY was like, they got the cards. So I was like, oh, okay, great. We'll talk yes. about them. So you got them. They look really cool. Like, this seems to be one of these, a photo of a building that he's designed. It looks like it's looking at the back in Darmstadt, maybe in Germany. It looks unbelievable. The domes that you saw in that park are here on the top of this as well. Yeah, and actually that is a functional apartment complex, so people live in that. Fun fact, every one of those windows in that apartment is different. So no two... Two windows are the same in that apartment. Oh, wow. I'm looking at it now. And yeah, it's all higgledy-piggledy, <laughs> different sizes and shapes. That is a nightmare if you're going to repair those <laughs> frames or anything like that. But it looks so cool. <laughs> That's such wow. a good point. Yeah. And, th and then these, I guess, are, are paintings maybe by uh, the artist himself. Right. There's a portrait. And then also uh, that one that kind of looks like a spiral. That, uh, from what I understand, is kind of represents a roads, but it's a bit more organic. So, you know, if you saw in the video, there's a huge version of that. And you're supposed to kind of like follow it with your finger. And it, it kind oh. of shows that no road is the same and it can kind of change shape and be altered. And But it's also uh, a bit like nature where you can't completely control it and decide exactly what it's going to do. So I think... Ooh. It's interesting how a lot of his paintings and his buildings incorporates nature and architecture as well, because architecture is just something that we just built. And it's like it's supposed to be like this and every window and door is supposed to be uh, for functionality. And as you mentioned, the, the poor repairmen that have to fix these things. But uh, <laughs> he, he, he's like, you know, well, it doesn't have to be like that. And it can be both. Why not? Yeah, these are really beautiful. What an interesting park. Where's our final destination, Mark? Well, before we get into that, we, we forgot our first most vital part of the show. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, no. Right, because you mentioned it. Map. <clears throat> Map time. So this should give you an idea of where Udo is. As You were exactly correct. Northeast, uh -huh. right there, the red arrow. That's it. Okay. Yeah. What's the island down on the opposite side, southwest? Yeah, so that's, that is uh, Gapodo and Marado. Right. So that's ah, where I've covered okay. Angel. Angel covered the little guy, the southernmost point of South Korea. And then I covered Gapodo just above. And then we went all the way up here to Udo Northeast. Oh, yeah. OK. So does it feel different? Like, I wonder, because Jeju's, you know, not small, but not massive. So if you're on the south coast or the northeast coast, I wonder if it feels different. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, the, each each island has, with the exception of Marado, Gapado has its own population, and you know they it's an islet, but they are their own village, their own culture. Udo has seventeen hundred people, 
and their own subculture. Mm-hmm. And and it's got the roads and the cars and everything like that. So it is That's like a, a sizable place as well. Did you manage to see like all of it? Right. So this trip, uh, we covered some different aspects. The very first time I went on, I actually walked and uh, I walked the Olegil, and that essentially is the circumference of the island. So you actually go to the the, the highest points of Udo, and that is really cool because wow. manager Kim Jae Won of the Underwasser Park he said something really interesting that stuck with me. Is he's like, it's interesting to see Jeju when you're not on it. I guess so. Uh huh. Udo is close enough that you can clearly see uh, Jeju from just the side and. Oh. When you're at wow. the highest point, really, you can actually almost see the entire length of Jeju, which is kind of like mind blowing to me. So that was really cool. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, that's a good tip if you're going to Udo Island. Take a look back at Jeju. Um, so where are we going in part three? Right. So Mr. Kim, his advice about seeing the island, as I said, was to uh, go out and check it out from outside of the island so we decided to do that with Udo so what we did and he, to his suggestion was to take a boat ride and he literally said oh you, you have you done the boat ride have you done the speedboat ride and we're like nah uh-huh. I mean I've, we've seen it. it looks kind of funny he's like no you have you have to do it so uh, we oh. took his advice and he had a connection and he he, he connected us and we, we hit it up. We did the speedboat ride and you can see that in our next picture. All right. Yeah, we've got an image. So it looks like a fancy boat all open air as well. Um, and that's you pointing back towards Udo Island. So if I go to Udo on my next trip to Jeju, you've convinced me. How can I enjoy it? What What's your two cents? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, You know, if I went back there, other than doing what you saw me do here in in today's episode, there's the Ole Trail. Uh, You can also, and thanks to JY, she put in the chat that, yes, you must have a driver's license to operate the vehicle that I was using. They also have electric bicycles. Mm. You don't need a license for that. Uh, They also have the Ole Gil. Uh, They have an Ole Trail that goes around the circumference Mm -hmm. of the island as well. And go ahead, eat some of the peanut treats. You can also spend a night there. And yeah, it's again, it's so convenient to, to go straight from Sungsan Lee, Sungsan um, Port to the island and get back with enough time to spare. So it, it's fantastic. Wow. They all, oh, here's the thing. Also, here's really wild. Uh, the, the boat captain told us this that in every October, they host the Cave Concert Series. And it features choirs oh. performing inside the Goregul or the whale cave near Gomore Beach. Wow. So that's a different island cave, water cave. But uh, the boats go in there and it can fit, I think you said like six to 800 people or something. But can you imagine oh. how that would sound? Yeah. So it was canceled, yeah. um, held back during COVID, but now it's reopening this year. So October cave, cave concert. Sounds good, Mark. That was brilliant today. Thank you so much. Have a good week, buddy, and we'll see you next Tuesday. All right, see you then. What's Up in Jeju is supported by the JDC, which is creating a free international city that resembles nature, embraces the future, and reaches the world. I'm Mark Wilson-Che, with writer Che Jung-Yun. This is Arirang Radio.